Okay, guys, so uh, thank you. Welcome to Asylum Insights today by SmartVimo. So I'm going to be presenting uh, procrastinating uh, uh, for productivity. Uh, everybody knows what procrastinating is? Yes. Okay, so it's doing something later. It's not doing it right now. And there's reasons, there's good reasons why you might want to do that. Okay, so yeah. All right, so the first thing is, um, you know, how to be more productive. It's the, the, the real topic behind, behind procrastinating. Um, and it's all about a certain uh, series of techniques and habits that you can develop in order to be more productive. So the first thing, or the most important thing, is to create lists, create tasks. And there's a lot of talks and a lot of uh, documents on, on how to create tasks. Um, the, there's a book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where it talks about uh, uh, productivity, what's supposed to be first and last. So we're going to talk about that. The, the, the most important thing about a task or a plan is to create a smart list of tasks. What is smart? So it's simple, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's realistic, and it's timely. That is what smart is. So it's basic, oh, I'm okay. All right. So it basically means create a list of, when, when you have a plan, a process, uh, something to do, organize it by tasks and say, okay, well, this is the first thing I need to do, the second thing I need to do, the third thing. If it's a small task or if it's your, your goals for your life, you need to do it the same way. So you create them as a smart thing, meaning you it's very clearly defined, it's measurable. You can say you can know easily when you achieve it or not. So if you're doing your budget or you're doing a project for a client, you can easily measure, uh, you, you gain certain uh, milestones. Um, it's attainable. So it's something, uh, you know, it's realistic what you're, what, what you're doing. It's, it's attainable, you can actually get it and it's realistic. So. You're going to say, I'm going to make $100 billion this year, but you can make small milestones. And the other thing, the most important thing, is to be timely so that you can say, I need to do this within 30 days, within the next three hours, within the next three years. So you need to be uh, timely. Okay. So the important thing about uh, uh, task list is the priorities. So the normal, the, the classic way of organizing um, a task list is just to do priorities. Say, okay, this goes first, this goes second, and you just move them around. This is a very old method of organizing your, your task list or your projects or your goals or anything else. So you need to ask your questions, is it important or is it urgent? It, you know, urgent is what we do every day when we're trying to um, take care of fires because the client called because this happened and you're just running around and by the end of the day, you're, you're, you feel that you didn't have a productive day. So. If you do important stuff, then you feel it was productive. You, you, if you just do orient things, you're tired at the end of the day and nothing really gets done. The other thing is, you know, determining what really is important. And um, it, do I need to do it now or do I need to do it later? So it's important. Uh, and here's where procrastinating com comes in. Uh, we're going to see in a bit. So do what really matters. And this is about creating more time for yourself. So if you're just shutting down fires and you're just taking care of or in things, um, you're really not creating more time for yourself. So by creating more time for yourself, I'm talking about doing stuff that is going to be significant. So the way we do task lists before goals or plans is we do, um, we organize them by urgency. I need to do this now. Somebody call me, I need to reply. The other thing is we say importance. How, how much is this worth? Is it something that if I do it, is I'm going to get maybe a client or I'm going to get 10 clients? But the really meaningful, the, the meaningful thing here is when you do something that's significant, is how much impact over time my task that I'm doing right now is going to have. And a very simple example of this is, is when we stop and we say, let's automate this process. Let's, let's think about how to magnify my time and have somebody else learn what I'm doing so I can put it on a piece of paper or if you create an email template where you say, okay, I stop for an hour, I create an email template, and I don't have to waste five minutes every time I need to reply for an email, wasting time. So it's the significance of how important what I'm doing is gonna be through time. So why do, why do we need to do this? Uh, there's a lot of studies, there's a lot of numbers, but it, it, there's many studies from Harvard and, and many universities where it says there's, um, you know, Plans that are cheap, that are in writing and that are properly organized are 95% more likely to happen. And this is like, you know, so you hear about the, the secret and stuff like that where there's nothing secret about it. It's that if you write it, you kind of mentally commit yourself to doing it. You mentally commit uh, your mental resources to actually get 
stuff done. So a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, I know I'm going to have a budget or yes, I know I'm going to do this for this client, but you don't write it down because you have very good memory. But when you actually write it down, it becomes kind of a fact. And, you, and then you, your mind is going to start working to, to uh, achieve this goal. The other thing is, um, of course, uh, it's really easy to measure. So if you don't write it down, did we say we're going to sell 100 accounts or 1,000 accounts? How much do we actually uh, commit it ourselves to do? So when you can measure it, then you can also improve on it. And whatever, you know, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve. So if it's something too subjective, then it's going to be very hard for you to, to, to measure it. I'm suggesting that you make this into a habit. So a habit has usually three components. There's a trigger, there's an action, and there's a reward. So whenever you think about anything that you're doing, whenever somebody says, we need to do this, okay, stop and say, make a plan. Okay, let's make a list of tasks. Whenever you say, I need to change my life for any reason, I need to be more organized on my personal budget, or I need to exercise more, or whatever you're going to think about, make it into a habit to say, I need to write it down. And then write it down, say, we're going to, every time somebody says, a new process, a new task, a new, uh, whatever it is, write it down. And then you're going to, your, your reward is going to, is going to be that you can actually measure it and most likely you're going to measure success out of it. And if it's not success, then at least you have the, the tools to identify that something went wrong and then you can improve from it. So how to write a good plan. So use something that you can always carry with you. Nowadays, everybody has a phone, a tablet, a piece of paper and, and, and a pen. Keep it with you. There's many tools. There's Google Docs. There's Evernote. I started using Evernote very recently. No affiliation with the company, but uh, it's really cool. So you might as well use something like that that will help you organize your task list and always keep them uh, close with you. The other thing, the, the most um, after that, is making sure that you go through these four uh, steps. One is to, once you have a task list and you start your day and you, you review your task list, eliminate what you don't need to do. So there's sometimes a lot of excess that we don't actually need to take care of. And we have it in our task list and we just want to mentally feel comfortable that we check the box and that we accomplish something. But not really. I mean, you're not really making any difference just by checking the box. So make sure to eliminate whatever is excess. Um, you know, check your email seven times in the day. You know, that, that doesn't really work. Eliminate what, what's not useful in your day and focus on, on what's really going to make a difference. After that, then after eliminate, you want to automate or invest. So you want to, uh, if somebody says we need to do this template, this email, stop and determine if it's a task that you can invest time to make it more uh, productive tomorrow and the day after, so that what you do today is going to have a significant um, is going to have a significant um, effect later on. The next thing is analyzing if in your task list there's something that you can delegate. We always like to do everything. We, we want to say yes. We want to take ownership of everything. But sometimes it's better to, after you automate, meaning you invest time in documenting the process, training the people, maybe you can delegate. You don't need to do everything. And so you can focus on what really matters and what you can actually make a difference. The last thing is there's, there's a few tasks that you can say, I really need to do it. There's no way to automate it, but can it wait? Can I not do this today? And I can procrastinate and maybe do it tomorrow but it will gain some time today for me to make a difference. So you go through that mental process, you go through the elimination process, and then end up with some tasks which either you put them back in your task list for tomorrow, and then tomorrow you ask your, yourself the same questions. Maybe after five days, the same task ends up being irrelevant, and then you can just eliminate it. Okay, there are some common pitfalls that I wanted to, to, to point out. Uh, there's always a way to say no. A lot of people are very eager to please, very eager to just say yes to everything and, and put everything on, on, their, on their plates. You know, be, be willing to say no. You know, there's stuff that, you know, it's either not your core um, skill or something that, that you're not supposed to be doing. Say no. If somebody says start doing this. Well, no, that's not what I do. And that's not what I'm, what I'm good at. So always, you know, be, be conscious that you can say no to, to a few things. Uh, don't forget the team smart. So a lot of people create task lists, but forget to say, okay, I need to do this by tomorrow. So if it's a task list, a project, a process, or, or a goal for life, make sure to put a, a realistic uh, um, time to it, attached to it. Um, and this one's one of my favorites. It's not done until it's done. A lot of people say, well, I did it, but I just, I haven't sent it. Well, then it's not done. 
um, I created this, but it's not really executed. Well, it's not done. So it's very important to, whenever we say something is done, it's, it's actually done. I wanted to give credit uh, to Roy Baden. Uh, he actually wrote a book that takes into cons uh, starts implementing this process about uh, significance, and he has a very interesting TED talk um, uh, specifically about uh, the significance. Um, so I just wanted to give credit to him. And I heard this one uh, today, which is it, it's been resonating a lot with everything that we do internally in Smart in, in in everything that we do. Sometimes we're struggling between, okay, well, how do I stop taking care, uh, shutting down fires and how do I focus on significant things? Well, we need to put the work. So we need, it's a balance game where you, where you do what you have to do. And sooner or later, after you, you consciously make those decisions, you're going to start doing what you want to do instead of the other way around.